good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, based on your time zone. Uh, uh, let's get started. So today uh, we have Anna Bushik from uh, India, Paris, and ENS Paris. Uh, she's a member of Lynx, Laboratory of Information Networking and Communication Sciences. She received her MS degree, PhD degree, both uh, MS in Mathematics, PhD in Computer Science, both from University of Versailles. And uh, she was a recipient of 2015 Google Faculty Research Award. Her research interests include stochastic modeling, reinforcement learning, simulation, and performance evaluation with applications to networks and power systems. Today, she's going to talk about optimal control in dynamic matching systems. So without further ado, uh, the floor is yours, Anna. Uh, thank you. It's uh, really an honor to be a speaker at this uh, seminar uh, series. And uh, I will present uh, uh, research over the last couple of years that uh, has been joined with uh, uh, my student Arnaud Cadas and uh, my, co uh, my uh, uh, collaborators, uh, Josu Doncel, uh, Sean Main, uh, Ivo Adan, Varun Gupta, Jean Merez, Pascal Moyal, and Guidon Weiss. Uh, so uh, uh, I will first uh, uh, talk about, uh, ah, I can't, uh, I can't uh, move slides, ah, yes. Uh, I will first uh, uh, give some introduction and motivation for the uh, model we are studying, and then uh, uh, present uh, two types of results. In the first part, we will focus on the first come, first match uh, policy uh, in the uh, dynamic matching models. And uh, uh, then uh, we will move towards the uh, uh, control questions. And uh, first in the... Um, uh, uh, on some examples, and then we will uh, uh, consider the uh, asymptotic regime uh, uh, that is similar to heavy traffic in, uh, in queues. Okay, let's start. Uh, so uh, I assume everyone is uh, um, familiar with uh, uh, at least basic queuing theory, but uh, maybe to revise a couple of notions from uh, uh, matching. So uh, at least to fix uh, the notations. So we will have uh, two uh, population of items uh, that I will call a demand and supply in this talk. And uh, you can see uh, uh, one example uh, of uh, uh, three uh, classes of demand and three classes of supply on the right. And uh, uh, we have uh, um, the uh, compatibility graph between uh, classes of demand and supply that is given by a bipartite graph. And so we will denote uh, uh, by D of S so the uh, demand classes that can be uh, matched with uh, uh, supply item S and S of D uh, uh, for the uh, uh, demand uh, uh, class D, uh, all possible matches, of course. And uh, so uh, we are uh, saying uh, that, uh, well, for the static version of matching, uh, we have a perfect match if uh, uh, all the items uh, uh, have been uh, 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 matched um, among themselves. Uh, so uh, here, uh, I assume that there is xi of elements of uh, each type. And so uh, uh, I, uh, we uh, denote uh, uh, by um, m a matching, and you can see the uh, uh, conditions uh, to have a uh, perfect matching. And then uh, uh, for the uh, static version, uh, we have a uh, um, uh, characterization of existence of a perfect matching given by uh, Hall's uh, marriage uh, theorem from 35. So uh, then uh, uh, in uh, recent years, we have more and more applications in which uh, this uh, static version is not, uh, uh, not really uh, adapted anymore because uh, uh, for, uh, here is the example of uh, kidney pair donation. So you have uh, uh, patients uh, and uh, uh, donors that uh, jo can join in the program together. You can imagine that uh, a patient uh, has a family member or a friend that is willing to give uh, an organ uh, for them, but unfortunately they are not compatible. So they can join into the program and uh, uh, try to find a compatible uh, match. Uh, Another, uh, another example uh, from uh, 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 public housing uh, is uh, um, 
uh, as follows. So you have uh, uh, different types of uh, houses and different uh, uh, families that can uh, specify the uh, requirements, uh, for example, existence of a nearby school or a, a surface of the apartment or house they need. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, gives us uh, two uh, uh, different uh, populations of uh, families uh, and uh, houses. And uh, uh, we, uh, um, uh, we want to uh, match them, but uh, uh, the, uh, uh, since uh, uh, you need to have a very uh, uh, simple policy that can be easily uh, interpreted uh, to, the, uh, to the families, uh, so the uh, policy used was first come first matched, uh, meaning that uh, uh, the uh, item that comes into here, uh, for example, a family that comes into the system, uh, uh, will uh, uh, wait until uh, uh, a house uh, becomes available, and uh, a house uh, uh, available house is uh, uh, first uh, uh, given to the uh, person, to, I mean to the family that is in the system the longest amount of time. So uh, this uh, model was uh, initially studied by uh, Condently Kaplan and Weiss in 2009, and then by many other uh, authors. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, uh, you have uh, both uh, demand and supply that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, come into the system according uh, to some uh, um, ID uh, uh, process, and uh, uh, you have to uh, match them according to first come first uh, matched uh, policy. Uh, so uh, uh, the model we are going to consider is uh, uh, somehow a mixture of uh, uh, classical uh, queuing skill based uh, systems and uh, matching uh, uh, a theory of matching from a graph theory. So uh, instead of having classical notion of service, we will have a, a complete symmetry between uh, the two uh, populations, supply and demand. So uh, the matchings are assumed to uh, happen instantaneously according to the uh, uh, compatibility or matching uh, graph. And the items that cannot be matched are stored in a buffer and data for a compa uh, compatible uh, match. Okay, so to make uh, the model clear, uh, let us consider the simplest possible example, which is uh, uh, N model, uh, well, at least a non-trivial example. Uh, so you have two uh, uh, types of uh, demand uh, on the, uh, uh, the uh, and uh, two types of uh, supply. And uh, we will denote by uh, 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 the n the uh, unmatched uh, items uh, of type two uh, after uh, arrival of uh, first uh, uh, n items of both demand and supply uh, type. So uh, you can imagine that at each uh, time step, there is uh, one item of uh, demand that comes into the system. It is of probability alpha. Uh, of type one and probability with probability one minus alpha or type two, and then similar for demand with probability beta, we have item of uh, supply type one and one minus beta uh, uh, type two. Well, then you can uh, describe the dynamics uh, uh, as a Markov chain, and uh, uh, it's uh, very easy to compute uh, its stationary distribution. The uh, system is stable uh, if uh, uh, and only if uh, uh, we have the condition that alpha plus beta is uh, strictly uh, bigger than one. But uh, as soon as you move uh, from uh, uh, very simple examples, you get into a, a mess when you want to uh, uh, study the uh, state space of the chain because you need to track the order of uh, uh, arrived uh, items. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, at first, this looked uh, hopeless, but then uh, it turns out uh, this uh, has a very nice structure. In fact, uh, uh, this uh, type of models uh, have a product form solution for the stationary distribution. So let us uh, uh, um, uh, show that. But uh, in order to uh, uh, show the uh, basic ideas, I will move to uh, uh, a sister model. Uh, which is uh, a first come first matched in a uh, general graph. So uh, here in an example, you have uh, four different classes of items. And uh, we will assume that at each time there is exactly one uh, item 
that comes uh, into the system. And uh, uh, we have a compatibility graph that is now uh, any graph and uh, it's assumed to be uh, uh, connected. Uh, we have a, a probability a distribution mu over the uh, classes of items and uh, arrival uh, sequence is assumed to be ID. And uh, uh, we are studying a first come first match policy as before. Uh, and uh, assuming instantaneous matchings, and we will uh, denote by Wn uh, the uh, uh, word of uh, unmatched items at time n. Okay, so uh, uh, let us see on an example what uh, happens. So uh, imagine uh, that we start from empty uh, system at time zero, uh, and uh, then uh, first uh, uh, there is item of type one that arrives into the system. So uh, our state is now one, and uh, then there is item three, so we have word one three. Uh, then there is uh, item four that arrives into the system, three and four get matched, and now the uh, state is a uh, one, so uh, and uh, so on. So uh, now there is item of type two that arrived, got matched with uh, item of type one, and we are back to empty, uh, 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 empty word. Okay, uh, so uh, let, uh, uh, let us fix uh, some uh, additional notation. For any subset of uh, uh, item classes uh, U, we are going to denote uh, E of U, uh, the uh, classes that can be matched with uh, uh, items uh, uh, in the set U. And uh, we will denote by I of G, uh, independent sets of G. Uh, so uh, independent set uh, is a subset of uh, um, vertices in the graph such that uh, there is no uh, shared uh, edge between uh, uh, the two uh, item, uh, the two vertices in the subset. So uh, we are uh, uh, going to denote uh, by uh, 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 stub of uh, G, uh, the uh, set of measures uh, uh, such that uh, our chain is positive recurrent. And the sufficient conditions for that is that for any uh, independent set, uh, the uh, uh, mu of uh, 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 the set is uh, strictly smaller than mu of uh, the neighbors of this uh, uh, set. Okay. And uh, so, uh, uh, Jean Marais and Pascal Moyala showed in uh, 2016 that uh, for any G, uh, connected uh, graph G, uh, the, uh, this uh, uh, necessary uh, th this set of necessary conditions is non-empty if and only if we have a non-bipartite matching graph. Okay, so. Uh, uh, as I promised you, uh, so we have uh, for this type of uh, solution, uh, th this type of models, uh, product form solution for the stage scenery uh, distribution. Uh, and uh, uh, it uh, can be uh, given uh, in the following form. Uh, so uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the probability of uh, a word uh, uh, W uh, can be obtained as a product of uh, uh, over the uh, uh, all the letters of my word from uh, so from L to Q of uh, the mu of the current letter uh, divided by mu of uh, uh, all the possible neighbors of everything I have seen so far. So uh, and the normalizing constant can be also uh, exp expressed uh, in terms of uh, independent sets and the permutations over uh, uh, all the uh, over the uh, items within an uh, independent set. So, uh, okay, we can have a closed uh, form expression for the normalizing constant, but as you can see, uh, it involves uh, all the independent sets and permutations over uh, the set themselves. So uh, uh, let me just guide you through uh, uh, main ideas of the proof. So uh, for any word, uh, we will denote the uh, uh, reversed uh, uh, version of uh, the word uh, uh, by an arrow that goes to the left. Uh, and uh, 
uh, we will uh, introduce a copy of our uh, item set uh, uh, that will uh, denote by a, um, a bar. And uh, uh, so uh, for any item in B, uh, think of it as a shadow item in this uh, uh, copy uh, space. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, a shadow of a shadow is the item itself. Uh, and uh, we will denote by uh, V uh, a union of uh, these uh, uh, items and uh, shadow items uh, by bold V. Okay, so uh, now we are going to define two auxiliary chains, uh, uh, the chain uh, uh, B and F. Uh, and uh, uh, so that I will go, uh, call a past or backward chain and forward or a future chain. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, first uh, uh, the past chain is defined uh, uh, as follows. So uh, we uh, uh, start by, by empty uh, word and then uh, uh, if at any time n uh, the uh, 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 the Q is uh, Q size is empty. Uh, Q is empty. Then uh, we are going to fix that uh, this uh, past chain is also empty. Uh, and otherwise, we are going to search uh, for the uh, oldest uh, item that is still unmatched at time n. And uh, uh, we are going to uh, uh, keep as a state of process B uh, uh, B uh, the uh, whole detail between this. Uh, uh, last uh, uh, all this time much uh, item and uh, uh, the actual time we are considering now. Uh, so if uh, uh, an item has not been matched up to time n, we are keeping the original value of uh, uh, the arrived item uh, at that time. And if it has been matched, then we are taking uh, instead of the item itself, the shadow of the item uh, uh, that we got matched with. Okay, uh, if we define this uh, uh, process uh, Bn, then uh, uh, we can uh, uh, obtain the uh, state of uh, W by strictly uh, restricting, uh, I mean, by restricting the state of uh, process B only uh, on the uh, um, items of the original uh, space. So, so or on the original items, we, are, uh, we erase all the shadows uh, that, uh, that we keep in the, uh, for the process B. Okay, uh, then similarly, we are going to define a future chain by uh, keeping uh, uh, the uh, uh, information what uh, happened after uh, time uh, N. So we are going to uh, track the largest uh, index of an item uh, that arrived after time n and that it got matched with an item that uh, arrived into the system before time n. So uh, if uh, an item uh, was not matched with uh, something that arrived before n, we keep the uh, value as it is and uh, if it was matched before n, then we take the shadow of the match as before. Okay, let uh, us see that on an example. So the same sequence as, as before, uh, we start from uh, everything uh, that is empty and then uh, uh, when uh, I, first item arrives, uh, so uh, our uh, uh, state of uh, process B is one we only track the, uh, the item that uh, is still unmatched at time n, but, uh, uh, and everything up to n. So here it's only uh, the, uh, the item one. And for the process F, we have to track uh, everything up to the last uh, item that got tracked, that got matched before time n. So we keep word three, four and shadow of one. So two got matched with one, we write one shadow. Then we continue, uh, the next item is three. Uh, so we have a, a chain B that is now one, 
three and uh, uh, chain F that is uh, uh, shadow of three and shadow of one. We continue. Uh, and uh, uh, now we have something uh, uh, interesting that is also happening with uh, uh, process B. So uh, uh, as we added uh, now uh, item four, uh, uh, three and four got matched. Therefore, we keep uh, the last unmatched item, which is still one, but also the shadows uh, four and uh, three. And now the uh, F uh, process has stayed one shadow. And uh, at the next step, uh, we I'll come back to the uh, um, everything that is matched up to n, so everything is uh, as empty set, empty words, and we continue. Okay, so uh, uh, we are going to denote admissible states for those two processes by uh, 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 well b and f, uh, and uh, uh, we are, we can describe the uh, admissible states for process b. Uh, uh, as uh, as follows, so uh, uh, those are uh, the states that uh, uh, that uh, satisfy uh, the three conditions. Uh, first item is always uh, of the original type. Then we can't have uh, any two uh, letters that are uh, compatible and that are in the uh, in my word. So if two letters are compatible uh, of uh, original type, they would get uh, matched and disappear from uh, my word. They would get uh, replaced by the shadows, right? Uh, and uh, uh, also the third one, uh, third condition, uh, um, describes uh, actually the nature of a first come first matched policy. Uh, so if uh, I'm still unmatched, then anything that I was compatible, uh, I was compatible with that arrived before, uh, uh, actually, uh, um, I mean, how to say that? Uh, so uh, if I arrived at time uh, uh, K, uh, anything that's, uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, any item that arrived before me could not get matched with an item that was compatible with me. So this is by uh, uh, nature of first come first served, uh, first uh, matched policy. Okay, uh, we have uh, uh, also uh, the uh, one, to ma one mapping be uh, between uh, uh, admissible items for the process B and process uh, F. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, as you might have guessed, uh, we are actually considering uh, chains B and F because uh, we are uh, going to show that uh, uh, we have uh, a variant of reversibility in the system. Uh, so uh, uh, we will uh, uh, set the, uh, we will consider the following uh, uh, measure. Uh, so for the empty word, uh, we will set that uh, uh, new uh, b is equal to one. And then uh, for any other word, uh, we are going to uh, consider the product of uh, uh, the uh, uh, probability of uh, uh, the item uh, of type i uh, and uh, to the power that uh, uh, how many times we actually saw uh, either the original item or the shadow of uh, that item. So uh, in particular, you can see that uh, if uh, we uh, uh, take uh, the word itself, transform it into shadows and uh, uh, read it uh, from right to left, uh, then the, this measure remains un, uh, unchanged. And uh, uh, we actually have uh, uh, the uh, um, reversibility between these uh, chains uh, B and uh, F. Okay, uh, so... Uh, uh, maybe uh, just uh, one uh, uh, curiosity after, uh, before uh, I will uh, pause for the uh, 
uh, for questions. So uh, first, uh, come first March uh, policy has a really uh, interesting uh, feature that uh, it comes that we can actually describe uh, uh, the state and redistribution as a product form, but it has also many inconvenience uh, inconveniences. Uh, for example, the normalizing constant is hard to compute, but also uh, it uh, does not incentivize uh, the items to truly uh, report uh, their compatibilities. You can see uh, uh, this on an example. Uh, there is a, a graph of four classes. Uh, these, uh, uh, you can see the uh, uh, probabilities of uh, uh, arrival of each class. And here by uh, alpha zero, I denote the probability that uh, there is no item at uh, uh, one time step that arrives in the, uh, the system. Note that if we allow that at each time step, there is exactly one item that arrives into the system, the uh, obtained chain is of period two. So if we want to uh, consider uh, something that really has a, a steady state, uh, uh, one trick is to add a small probability that uh, there is no item at each time. So you can compute the uh, uh, mean uh, number of unmatched uh, items uh, in the steady state. I, I don't want you to try to understand this uh, formula, but it's easy to compute. And uh, because it's a very simple example. And then uh, now we will add the uh, link between uh, classes one and two. And uh, what we obtain uh, is uh, uh, that uh, uh, if uh, uh, my parameter delta uh, is uh, uh, in the union of, of the following uh, two intervals, then adding an I, uh, a link actually uh, um, deteriorates the performance of the system. So by adding a link, I'm increasing the mean number of uh, waiting items. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, intuitively uh, for the class three, uh, uh, items uh, uh, one and two uh, were uh, serving this class. Uh, and now, uh, uh, since I, uh, I added this, uh, this link, uh, now they can get matched uh, between themselves. And uh, if uh, uh, the uh, probability of uh, arrival of item three uh, was uh, very close to uh, the sum of one and two, I'm actually uh, not helping the system by adding a link between one and two. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, before going to bipartite uh, uh, ca uh, case, I'm going to stop for a, a quick question. Maybe I'll ask a quick question. So, uh, uh, you have this condition for stability. Uh, right, and then you said that it's not for a bipartite graph. Uh, the stability is only for non-bipartite graph. Yes. So what is is there a simple example? Because I was thinking of a single link, like just two queues, and a, uh, uh, that can be matched. That is obviously bipartite, and so it doesn't satisfy the condition. Is there a sim? What is the simplest example I can think of? Is it something like a triangle? Mm, what do you mean? Uh, so for the uh, bipartite uh, case. If you have one arrival at each time step, you actually get a, a random walk on a line. Uh, right. And uh, so it can't be uh, stable. Right? stable. That is not stable, exactly. Yeah. So we will uh, slightly modify the, uh, uh, the model for the bipartite case in both polos uh, yes. to include uh, at each uh, uh, time step, there will be exactly one item of demand and exactly one item of supply that it uh, will arrive into the system. I see. I see. I see. OK. OK. Thanks. There is a question by uh, Sid. Do you have a question? Hey, uh, I wanted to ask if you don't match with the longest waiting item, can you get a bigger stable region? Uh, no. Uh, this uh, this uh, the um, first come first match actually has maximal stability region. Uh, so uh, 
uh, what we saw the uh, I don't know if uh, if it's any uh, if, uh, ah it's too too ah so uh, you can see the uh, necessary stability uh, uh, conditions uh, uh, here uh, so uh, uh, for the uh, first come first matched we will also have uh, uh, I mean this is also sufficient so uh, yeah okay. And otherwise, uh, I mean, just take uh, take uh, uh, independent set that does not satisfy uh, this condition. For this independent set, uh, you are going to uh, build uh, the queue. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So I can go back, and uh, uh, so I'll continue. Uh, so. Uh, uh, it's uh, very nice uh, that you have a question on, on the bipartite case. Uh, so uh, uh, that already answered uh, this slide. Uh, so we are, uh, have now arrived, arri arrivals in pairs according to some measure mu. Uh, we do not uh, uh, require that there is independence between uh, the supply and demand class, but there is ID assumption in time. We are assuming uh, that uh, we have a connected bipartite graph. And uh, uh, here, uh, the necessary stability conditions are, uh, well, uh, the uh, uh, whole uh, marriage theorem condition, but with strict inequalities. OK, and uh, uh, for the bipartite case, we can also have, uh, uh, we also have a product from uh, solution for the uh, first come first matched uh, uh, policy, but uh, uh, that uh, is of a very similar nature to what we have seen uh, for the general case. Uh, the uh, the thing is that uh, it's a little bit more messy uh, because you have to uh, keep track of uh, two populations, but ideas are really the same. And uh, uh, the proof was first done for the bipartite case. And then uh, once we uh, uh, considered the general case, uh, the, uh, uh, the actual steps of the proof became much, uh, much uh, I mean, crystallized really nicely because uh, uh, of uh, having only one population to, uh, uh, to handle. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, let's... Uh, uh, move her from first come first served. And uh, uh, so uh, we will now consider any uh, uh, Markovian policy. Uh, and uh, 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 so uh, since we uh, assumed that the arrival, uh, arrivals are now by pairs, uh, we are going to have matching graph and arrival graph. And we are going to consider a third graph that uh, is uh, a directed graph that is obtained by orienting the uh, edges in the matching graph from uh, demand to supply. And uh, uh, in the arrival graph, we have orient uh, from uh, uh, supply to demand. If we do that, uh, then uh, uh, there is uh, uh, a very nice uh, 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 property that uh, the actual structure of the graph uh, gives you uh, the uh, uh, the um, existence of a measure that is in that satisfies necessary conditions. So uh, we, uh, if the associated uh, directed graph is strongly, uh, I mean, uh, there is a measure that is in n cond if and only if the associated uh, directed graph is strongly connected. And uh, uh, in that case, uh, any greedy Markovian policy uh, has. Uh, 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 unique, uh, strictly connected component uh, from uh, to which you are going to go, uh, 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 go from any initial state. Uh, I'm calling uh, a policy greedy if uh, uh, it never leaves unmatched uh, compatible items. Okay, because uh, you might want to actually to uh, uh, wait and not, matched, uh, not get matched with something in the system. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, for the, uh, uh, just a few words uh, for the uh, stability. Uh, so uh, 
um, there is, uh, uh, besides the first come first match policy, there is also the uh, policy that uh, is matched the longest. Uh, so you are going to match an item with an item uh, that has uh, the uh, biggest queue uh, among all the possible uh, um, options you have. Uh, this uh, match the longest policy also has the maximum stability region, and the proof is just via uh, quadratic Lyapunov uh, uh, function. Uh, uh, but uh, in order to show that, we actually used uh, uh, another randomized policy uh, and uh, uh, used argu uh, arguments uh, from uh, network flows for that. Okay, uh, then there are policies that do not have maximal uh, stability region, and uh, typically these are priority policies or much the shortest, which is probably the, uh, the opposite of something that you might want to do in the system. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, this is an uh, NN graph in which uh, uh, the red uh, 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 edges uh, denote uh, the priorities. So, so uh, uh, item of demand type one gives priority to supply of type two, uh, for example. And uh, uh, for, uh, in that, uh, for this priority uh, policy, you can find uh, an example from an uh, end quant that is unstable. Uh, here in, uh, uh, on the uh, picture on the bottom, uh, in yellow region, uh, we can show that uh, this is sufficient conditions uh, for st uh, stability, so you're always uh, stable. Uh, but uh, in the red uh, area, you might not be. And red and yellow both give the necessary stability condition for this example. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, just a very interesting uh, connection between bipartite and non-bipartite uh, case uh, that was observed by Meres and Moyal in 2016 is that uh, uh, you can actually see a general matching graph as a particular case of uh, uh, the bipartite uh, matching model. Uh, so, uh, uh, so how does this work? Uh, you are going to uh, uh, construct as demand classes all the uh, original uh, item classes. And uh, uh, I'm just going to double this uh, on the bottom and then uh, connect uh, uh, so uh, if uh, there is a link, for example, between one and two, I'm connecting one and uh, two shadow, but also uh, two with one shadow. So this obtain, uh, this uh, helped them to uh, recover all the uh, properties that were uh, already uh, uh, showed for the bipartite case. In particular, that uh, match the longest has maximal stability region also for the uh, uh, general case. Okay, uh, so let's move to the uh, uh, control questions. Uh, so uh, first you might uh, want to uh, uh, consider the, uh, 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 I mean, any regime, uh, but uh, uh, first, uh, uh, very soon you are, uh, you are getting to, uh, uh, into difficulties uh, uh, to prove uh, uh, properties for general graphs. So uh, uh, we wanted to first start with a heavy traffic re regime, but uh, uh, what does that mean for matching uh, models? And uh, uh, can we uh, uh, give any uh, uh, asymptotic uh, uh, results? Uh, so uh, this is a uh, joint work by uh, Sean Nine. And uh, there is a related work by Gorvich and Ward that, uh, that considered a uh, uh, more general example of hypergraphs, but with uh, conditions on the graph structure uh, that uh, uh, in the bipartite ca uh, case uh, um, are very restrictive. Uh, so, uh, uh, so let's uh, uh, try to uh, uh, see uh, how we can deal with bipartite case. Uh, so uh, we will uh, uh, set a cost function C uh, for the buffer levels. Uh, in, the, in this talk, I'll assume that uh, this is a linear function of the Q size, and uh, we are considering average cost, uh, cost case. Uh, so uh, we will denote uh, uh, the Q dynamics at time uh, T plus one. I have uh, the state of the Q uh, at time T uh, minus the, uh, uh, what I actually matched plus, uh, plus the arrivals, right? And uh, uh, 
I have uh, uh, the uh, input process U that has to respect the uh, uh, matching uh, compatibilities. Uh, so uh, uh, we have uh, um, the, uh, uh, the possible uh, uh, states are denoted by uh, U, uh, uh, I mean, I don't know, uh, diamond or something. I don't know how to call that. Uh, so uh, then uh, we will also consider a, a process that uh, uh, we will call X, that is uh, the state of the queue plus the new arrivals. And uh, this will be the state of our uh, um, mark of decision process. Uh, and uh, note that uh, um, for the state space of uh, X, uh, we require that there is uh, exactly the same number of uh, demand items uh, and the supply items. Okay, uh, let me just uh, briefly go back to the N model. Uh, so uh, that we saw at the beginning of the talk. Uh, for this case, we can uh, fully characterize the optimal policy. Uh, and uh, this is uh, 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 as follows. So um, uh, you, uh, uh, priority is given to the uh, edges, uh, and, uh, I mean, uh, to, the, uh, to the edges that are um, going to the leaves in my graph. Uh, so uh, I'm going to, for demand item of type uh, one, I'm going to prioritize class two of supply and uh, symmetrically for uh, supply. And then the uh, uh, diagonal edge is activated only uh, with a certain threshold. So only when I have a certain uh, safety stock uh, of, uh, uh, of items uh, of type one, I'm going to uh, authorize the uh, matchings between them. And we can actually compute the value of the threshold. Uh, so, but uh, you can't really easily generalize these kinds of results for models that are more complicated. So we are going to try to figure out what we can, uh, uh, what we can do, uh, uh, and in particular, uh, what is the equivalent of workload in our model. Uh, so. Uh, For that, we are going to select a uh, set of items D, and uh, uh, we are uh, going to define a workload vector corresponding to this set as uh, the uh, number of items of uh, classes that belong to D minus everything that can be matched with uh, items in class D. Okay, uh, and then we can rewrite necessary or sufficient conditions for st uh, stabilizing policy uh, or n cond in terms of workload vector. Vector vectors and uh, alpha is here the uh, I mean uh, arrival uh, vector and uh, uh, why do I call this workload uh, in my model because uh, uh, it uh, nicely describes uh, the uh, uh, minimal time to uh, reach uh, uh, the uh, um, empty uh, state from any initial state. Okay. But uh, uh, I will uh, consider now a tr heavy traffic regime where uh, one of, uh, uh, of um, one or uh, actually I will consider only the case where only one uh, delta uh, goes to zero. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, uh, we are going to consider a workload process uh, V uh, that uh, is going to correspond uh, to uh, one particular subset uh, D, the one that is critical in our system. And uh, note that this workload process can be both positive or negative. And uh, uh, we are going to uh, 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 have a similar uh, dynamics as in uh, queuing systems. But uh, here, non-idling uh, is very particular thing. Uh, non-idling uh, means uh, that uh, um, the uh, items that can get matched with classes of type uh, that is in D only get matched with them. Not, they are not doing matches with D complement. So one curiosity, you can, uh, you can do nothing and still you are not idling, as long as you are not doing cross matches. Okay, so uh, we, are, we are going to take uh, 
uh, this workload process as uh, uh, our model. And uh, uh, we are going to do a, a one dimensional workload relaxation. Uh, we are considering the uh, workload of the, uh, of the critical uh, subset D. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, uh, let me just uh, guide you through this. Uh, so, uh, 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 I have to define what is the cost for my workload process now. And uh, I'm going to define uh, the effective cost as uh, minimum uh, value of my uh, cost for uh, any uh, among all the states that have the same value of the workload. Okay. Uh, if my uh, cost function is linear, then this uh, workload uh, effective cost uh, for workload is uh, going to be piecewise linear. And then uh, since now I have one dimensional uh, uh, model, I can uh, use the results of Clark and Scarf. And uh, uh, so uh, you have a uh, uh, um, uh, threshold uh, policy. You can't, uh, uh, my, uh, in, my, in our case, uh, so we are going to uh, be authorized to idle only if uh, um, uh, we are, uh, uh, our workload process is uh, uh, very negative. I mean, be, uh, below the threshold uh, a minus T star. And we can actually express the value of T star. Okay, uh, so, uh, Let me now state the main result. Uh, so we are going to have uh, uh, a family of arrival processes that are, I'm going to uh, uh, index by delta. Uh, and uh, uh, um, we are going to have uh, 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 three following assumptions. Uh, the first assumption says that uh, uh, there is only one critical uh, subset of uh, items uh, uh, of uh, of demand, and there is only uh, so for any uh, other there is uh, 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 the drip that is uniformly bounded, uh, and uh, 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 so we have that uh, arrival um, rate alpha is a continuous function of uh, delta, and uh, also that uh, uh, the graph structure. Uh, uh, for my uh, both me, uh, my arrival and the ma uh, matching graph, uh, do not depend on the value of uh, delta. Typically, when delta uh, goes to zero, I should not get disconnected uh, components. And uh, there is it, it, there is a possibility to idle. Okay. Uh, so under these conditions, uh, we can. Uh, 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 we can uh, uh, show uh, that there is uh, um, a policy uh, that uh, um, uh, that uh, has a, a bounded uh, uh, regret in terms of delta. Uh, so uh, this uh, policy is uh, of uh, uh, um, H max weight type bit threshold. So uh, what does that mean? We have a diff uh, we have a function uh, h that is differentiable and uh, a given threshold uh, two, and then uh, we are taking the uh, uh, arg max uh, of uh, uh, with respect to uh, the gradient of my fu uh, function uh, h, but uh, we are uh, we have a, a condition that uh, uh, we. Um, um, that basically describes when we are authorized to do uh, idling in our system. Uh, so, uh, okay, note that uh, uh, we, will, uh, we will use uh, the workload re relaxation to actually bound uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, optimal uh, average cost uh, for uh, uh, for our model and uh, uh, for the uh, uh, policy uh, that is H max weight uh, the threshold. Uh, just a uh, 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 couple of uh, uh, 
details here. Uh, so uh, the actual uh, age uh, can be defined as uh, um, a tilted version of the cost uh, function itself. Uh, so uh, uh, so uh, you're actually applying the cost, but to a state that uh, uh, is like slightly perturbed. Uh, so this is done in order to, uh, to, uh, to avoid problems with the drift at, uh, uh, um, in state zero. Uh, and uh, 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 then, uh, uh, well, uh, if you wouldn't add this uh, uh, tilted version, if you would just take uh, H as uh, C, uh, then uh, you can actually see that uh, uh, the H max weight policy uh, um, uh, can reduce to the uh, priority policy. So as we have seen within the class priority policies, uh, you can have very bad behavior, so uh, uh, bad things can also happen here if you just take uh, uh, um, as h the, uh, uh, the actual cost function. Uh, so uh, you can see uh, one example here uh, for which uh, C max weight policy uh, is actually policy uh, that is uh, uh, the opposite of uh, what we would uh, like to do. You would like to uh, uh, give priority to edges uh, E2 and uh, E4, and you are actually giving priority to the vertical uh, edges. Okay, uh, I'm. Uh, 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 I. Uh, do I have uh, how 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 am I uh, with time? I think uh, I should probably give you some time for questions. Uh, so uh, let me just uh, uh, very briefly guide you through the uh, through the ideas of the proof. Uh, so uh, uh, the idea is that once you uh, uh, fix the candidate for the uh, uh, for the uh, max weight with uh, uh, threshold policy, uh, then you are going to study the drift of. Uh, uh, of uh, of uh, uh, of uh, this uh, policy uh, for uh, for a very uh, uh, for a well designed uh, uh, function uh, v, and uh, uh, so uh, this uh, 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 this function uh, um, it takes uh, uh, several ingredients to construct. Uh, the first uh, ingredient is that uh, uh, that uh, uh, it's actually easier to prove uh, uh, the uh, uh, desired properties for, for the drift for the randomized policy. Uh, so uh, uh, the uh, for uh, basically for any um, flow in my uh, uh, associated max flow problem here that uh, uh, you see on the right that there is uh, um, my original uh, matching uh, graph that uh, has demand and supply items. I'm going to add the source that is having the edges towards the demand classes and uh, a sink that is uh, uh, that has edges going from supply items to, uh, to the sink. Uh, so I can take any flow in this uh, net, uh, network flow problem and transform it into the uh, randomized policy. Uh, and uh, 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 then I can ask myself uh, uh, if uh, the flow is uh, maxima, uh, maximum in my graph, uh, then uh, uh, can I have uh, any, uh, I mean, and then, and then I actually have uh, uh, um, negative uh, drift, but not strictly negative. And in order to get strictly negative drift, uh, we are going to slightly perturb this uh, uh, flow, uh, but uh, by uh, adding a path along a, uh, uh, along, uh, we are adding a path that is connecting any two positive cues that we are going to drain. And so uh, uh, you can, uh, uh, you need to work uh, uh, different cases uh, in a different way. So this will be enough for case three where, uh, where you can idle. Uh, then if you are going uh, uh, into the area where you are not authorized to uh, idle, uh, you have two cases, either uh, your effective cost, uh, I mean, your current cost is uh, very high with respect to the effective cost. And then the idea is uh, to uh, bring it down closer to the effective cost. 
or uh, the most difficult uh, cases when you are actually uh, very close to the effective cost, uh, where you should uh, show that uh, uh, you're actually not increasing too much the, uh, um, uh, I mean, you are not, not, uh, uh, not having uh, uh, any uh, uh, GIFT problems uh, similar that you would have uh, in, uh, uh, for example, near, uh, uh, in, the, in the case where, uh, where you're empty in some queue. Okay, so uh, first you're designing a good uh, randomized policy and uh, then uh, you are using this uh, to show the, uh, uh, the desired property for the uh, value function uh, that is constructed uh, uh, starting from the uh, relative value function of uh, the uh, diffusion approximation of the, uh, our workload process. Uh, and uh, this is H uh, uh, hat. And on top of that, we are going to add penalty uh, for, uh, for the deviation uh, from the effective uh, state. Uh, so effective state is a state that has minimal uh, value of, uh, 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 of our cost among all the states that have the same value of, uh, of, the, uh, of the workload. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, and then there is lots of technical uh, lemmas uh, to connect all this. Uh, so uh, this is one, uh, numerical example where you can see that uh, this uh, uh, C uh, tilde max weight, uh, the threshold is uh, really uh, uh, outperforming uh, the max weight policy, for example. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, so I'll uh, stop by giving some, uh, uh, some current uh, uh, directions and, uh, and uh, uh, I mean, ideas for future work. Uh, so uh, this was uh, just uh, using the uh, workload organization in uh, uh, one dimension. Uh, well, uh, can we actually extend this uh, to uh, uh, higher dimensions? This is still a uh, uh, work in progress. And uh, for the uh, non-heavy traffic setting, uh, I mentioned the N, N model. We can have some partial results for uh, very particular uh, graph structures uh, like uh, uh, complete graph minus one edge and uh, some partial results for the uh, 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 for uh, uh, acyclic graphs, uh, but uh, uh, it's uh, still a largely open question. And uh, uh, so one possible direction is to use uh, uh, reinforcement learning and try to figure out what is uh, the uh, whether we can learn something on the uh, on the uh, optimal policy in the non-heavy traffic setting. Uh, and uh, uh, so far, I only mentioned the optimization problem for the bipartite case. Uh, uh, well, it would be nice to extend this for the general case. Uh, and uh, also one possible direction is to combine the results for, uh, by uh, Nazari and Stoller uh, that considered the rewards on the edges with uh, the current results. Uh, and uh, then there are other uh, possible extensions you can think of that uh, would be closer to the uh, uh, applications you might, uh, might want to study. Okay, thank you. Uh, let us all thank Anna. So, uh, questions, Sid, uh, do you want to ask your question? Yeah, sorry, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Oh, awesome. Uh, thanks, Anna, that was a good talk. And uh, I really like the, the Brace Paradox result that you guys got now. Um, but I was wondering if I think of your proof technique for the first part for showing reversibility, it seemed like the important thing was being able to construct the reverse chain on the fly. Like as you observe the inputs, you could simultaneously, you knew what the forward chain was, but you could construct the reverse chain in a unique way. And that was the, the main, or like at least one major component that let you show reversibility. So do you think something like that would even extend to a priority policy where we could augment the state space in such a way that we can construct a candidate reverse chain, which is unique on the fly, and then 
use that to immediately get this sort of like a Gibbs measure on this augmented state space. So I, uh, I must say I'm pessimistic for that uh, because in general with priority pro policies, uh, I don't know many results that hold uh, for, I mean, I don't, I don't have any idea of a uh, result uh, that uh, has product form solution. So I would not go into that direction. But uh, okay. that doesn't necessarily mean that nothing is possible, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it sounds very unlikely. Okay. Thanks. Um, I, hi, I'm Sushil. I have a clarification question. Uh, so can you go to slide 23, actually? OK, let me try. Ooh. 23, 23. Ah, here. Uh, oh, it's a different one on the, so the doubling graph thing. Ah, doubling graph thing. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I added uh, some uh, recent results uh, to the uh, to the slides. So the... Uh, yeah, the driver is a bit different. Uh, so here, here you said that uh, for a general graph, you can convert it into a bipartite graph. So uh, what, what is the equivalence in the sense that this second theorem says that if it's a uh, bipartite, then this uh, necessary condition does not hold. So uh, how, how is it equivalent? Because then for the left-hand side, even if this condition holds for the right-hand side, it won't hold. Or am, am I getting it wrong? Mm. I don't. I don't think I understood your question. So, uh, like, like in the sense, uh, uh, given given the left hand side model, you are assuming there is exactly one arrival in one time step. Yes. And then you can show stability under some measures. So, on the right hand side, are you assuming one arrival of each type? Uh, so uh, on the right uh, hand side, uh, there is uh, there is assumption that uh, uh, well there is uh, uh, always uh, uh, one item of the original type that uh, that comes in the system and uh, brings at the same time its shadow. So you actually have a measure that uh, a rival measure that has support of uh, uh, only on the. Uh, well, uh, a rubber graph would uh, consist on only vertical edges mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. And so this is the res uh, this is the result by uh, Mehrez and Moyal. Uh, it's uh, I really like this uh, this result. So I'm not the author of that, but I really like it. So. Uh, I uh, wanted to illustrate it here because it's uh, it's uh, it's sometimes it's, it's uh, some proofs are easier on the general graph, sometimes some proofs are easier on the bipartite, and uh, this kind of allows to go from one world to the other. Of course, it uh, gives you uh, any a general graph uh, has its. Uh, uh, bipartite version, but note that there is strong dependence between uh, supply and demand items here. Only vertical edges are in the support of the uh, uh, of my uh, uh, distribution, right? Mm -hmm. Thank so you. it's it's not really uh, it doesn't really go the other way around. I mean, if you have any uh, uh, any uh, uh, arrival graph, uh, you won't be able, necessarily able to construct a general graph. Uh. So one, uh, maybe one, uh, uh, one uh, curious, uh, curious. Uh, uh, I mean, one one observation about application. Uh, so uh, I mentioned as a mot uh, motivation the. Uh, 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 organ uh, uh, donor pro, uh, pro problem. In that uh, pro particular problem, you are actually in the uh, general graph setting, not in the bipartite graph. Why? Because you have a restriction that uh, the surgery has to be uh, performed at the same time. So if uh, uh, there is a patient that has a donor that is willing to give an organ, uh, I can't just... Uh, 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 
uh, take a patient and the compatible donor perform this surgery because then uh, my donor of the patient would go away. Why he would now give an organ? Well, so uh, now when you consider that uh, uh, the patient and donors are actually one node, you end up in the a general graph setting. Okay, and then, well, in the if you would like to be the most, uh, the closest possible to the uh, application, then you should actually go to the hypergraph uh, model because you are interested in also in uh, uh, trying to find the, uh, uh, not just uh, pairs of uh, um, donor and uh, patient uh, uh, couples, but you would uh, like to uh, uh, find the uh, chains that are uh, longer than two, and uh, then you are in hypergraph setting. So, uh, so hypergraph model is uh, in very interesting, uh, interesting for applications too. I guess we can uh, end the seminar officially now, and then we can chat more if there are more comments or questions. Let's uh, let's thank uh, Anna again.